Uh, Fox News alert. From time to time, we bring you high-speed chases as they occur. Well, today we've got one that gets flipped on its head just a bit. This is a low-speed chase on the streets of Los Angeles. Authorities believe that the person driving this car is a parolee. They were following the car, ran the plates for one reason or another. We are not exactly clear as to why. Uh, discovered that he was a parolee driving the car. Uh, tried to pull him over, and he refused. Now, we were just listening to the uh, KTTV chopper pilot who speculated that perhaps uh, this is a third strike case. In California, you've got that three strikes and you're out felony law. You go to prison for life if you are convicted of a third felony. And uh, perhaps that's why he just doesn't want to pull over, but he doesn't want to pull over. Let's listen in to the KTTV chopper pilot. If he wasn't, you know, if he was innocent, he would have pulled over and asked the officers what seems to be the problem. He hasn't done that. The only good thing about this, we've seen so many of these pursuits, Steve, is that these drivers can be so erratic. They can be perhaps uh, on some sort of narcotic and be driving at, you know, really high rates of speed and, and uh, you, know, you know, really putting uh, the public at jeopardy here. But that's just not the case here. Here you can see that he's, you know, he busted through that stop sign. Yeah. But uh, he's keeping his speeds down to about 25 to 35 miles an hour in this residential area of San Pedro. They ride him up. Yes, he's going to be he's going to have a laundry list of infractions. That's right. And sometimes once you know, once it gets coverage like we're doing, you'll start to see some people Oh, I know that street, and they'll run out, and they'll wave to them, and west, westbound uh, 13. You're exactly right. See, that's the situation. You're, you're right. And he looks like he's going to make another uh, left turn here. He really is doing uh, circles here, and that was against the light again. And you could see that that car pulled over very quickly. Very good job by that SUV there. All right, so they are pursuing a silver car at low to moderate speeds there on the streets of Los Angeles. He is crossing the double yellow line, blowing through intersections, running stop signs, etc. Can't exactly call him a safe driver, but on a scale of 1 to 10, he's maybe a 5. Well, and as the, as the, again, the helicopter reporter mentioned, traveling at relatively slow speeds, 25 to 30 miles per hour in a residential area that we heard, John, before we got back on the air, usually is very busy, children going to school and things are a little bit quieter now, but one wonders, when do you just pull over? When did the cops get him off the street? Because as he is driving, it's still a threat. Yeah, well, he's passing cars on the right there. He, for whatever reason, wants to keep this thing going. Uh, we mentioned earlier, the, dr the police believe that the driver of this car is on parole they ran the plates on the car which leads you to believe that maybe the car was involved in some kind of a traffic infraction or looked suspicious or something for for whatever reason they ran the plates uh, discovered that the driver is thought to be on parole and i have to assume that by now you can say he's a parole violator because one of the things you're supposed to do when you're on parole is if a police officer asks you to pull over you're supposed to pull over and he is not doing that an excellent point john again we've been watching this just for a little bit san pedro california according to our, our helicopter reporter and there it looks like it might be picking up a little bit of speed so far 25 30 miles per hour uh, we only know at this time that there's the driver in the car but the helicopter reporter did mention that it looks like the windows are slightly tinted you never know if someone else is in the vehicle, whether or not there's another element there that maybe is making this driver decide he's not going to pull over. Again, just after 9 a.m. on the West Coast, so a little bit after commuting hours, but always busy streets down there in the L.A. area. And we still don't know the motivation for why this guy just isn't pulling over, John. You know the authorities would like to get those spike strips down if they could. Those are pneumatically operated strips that they lay down in the road. Uh, when they see the car coming, they are able to automatically inflate them. It, it puts the equivalent of big nails up in the air just long enough uh, for that one car to run over them, and then they are retracted. The problem is trying to figure out where this guy is going. When he's on city streets like this, there's absolutely no way for the authorities to know where he's going to be and where they could put the spike strips down. That's the problem here. Well, as the helicopter pilot also mentioned, or reporter mentioned, and you can see some other helicopters flying into uh, at least our vision right there, because obviously there's other folks that are covering this, probably the, the LAPD as well, taking a look at what's going on here. At this time, he's not, or she, you never know, isn't threatening anyone on the roads. You see running some stop signs. You can see the cop car kind of trying to come up behind him, John, but 
when you talk about those pit maneuvers, that usually happens at a higher speed. Is there anything that these police can actually do with this car at this speed? Well, they, they could probably uh, get away with making the pit maneuver work. Uh, that's where they nudge the rear quarter panel of the car with the front bumper of their patrol car, and they essentially take the weight off the rear wheels. They nudge the car in, in such a way that uh, the driver loses control and, and spins out. Usually they try to spin them into a wall or another parked car or something like that. Tough to do on a busy road, right? Well, it is, and, and they, they try not to do that unless they absolutely believe that the, the driver is going to hurt somebody or kill somebody. I suppose they're thinking that this guy seems to be maintaining control of his speed and maybe, uh, you know, he's not going to cause an enormous accident at the end of all this. But you never know. If, if he were to stray across the center line, even at these low speeds, you, you get the impact of a, an 80-mile-an-hour collision. So could be trouble. We'll continue to watch it and be back with more happening more happening now in just a moment. A Fox News alert back to the streets of Los Angeles where it's about 925 in the morning and police are still involved in what even they are acknowledging is essentially a slow speed pursuit of that silver compact car. Uh, just a moment ago, they thought they had him boxed in at an intersection where uh, other traffic had stopped in front of him and uh, he had cars left, right and center. Couldn't go anywhere. The police tried to pull around him and, and box him in and somehow he squeaked out of there. So this thing goes on. As we understand it, uh, the registered owner of this car is believed to be a parolee. And uh, well, there, there they, uh, it looked like they tried to pull the pit maneuver there tried to nudge the rear wheels of that car around in such a way that the driver loses control. They've apparently decided that they're on a stretch of road where they could make that happen without endangering the lives of innocent civilians. That's always the tough call that these cops have to make. And Jenny, you were just talking about it during the break. Imagine the adrenaline that is pumping in the chests of these officers as they try to pursue this guy. They, they, they're going, you know, with sirens and red lights and everything else. Uh, he's blowing through intersections. They have to worry about innocent people. And this guy, uh, believed to be a parolee who may have an arrest warrant out, um, be well, this guy is just, you know, making a mockery of the whole system. A little bit of frustration as well as adrenaline, I'm sure, John, because from what we can tell, they've been following this car for a little while now, just after 9 a.m. So they've been following this guy for maybe 25 minutes or so. Uh, and it, basically, if you're just joining us, this has just been in residential areas. So the car driver has been running stop signs and stop lights. But as far as any major erratic behavior, it hasn't been the case. Let's see if the cop is trying to come up on him, John. And you mentioned, though, it looks like we don't have a lot of people on the streets. We don't have a lot of cars. And it's vacillating between low speed and medium speed, but the guy hasn't really stepped on the gas quite yet. Well, imagine being that cop. You don't want to um, you don't want to cause a collision yourself. You just saw him going over the double yellow line. We will keep an eye on this and let you know if this one is brought to a successful conclusion. <laughs> All right, John, from Colorado, we're going to go back out to California, where we were watching a car chase take place over the last 20 minutes or so. And it just came to conclusion. And this is what happened. What do we say about this, John? Well, the guy, it's one of the more bizarre endings I've ever seen. The guy turns the corner just there. Just stops. Just stops after leading, as you can see, all those black and whites on quite a lengthy, low to medium speed chase. He's sitting there. You think it's all over. It's going to end with a whimper, of course. not a bang, right? Well, yeah, what else would happen? But what does he do? He throws open the car door and takes off running. And what happened then? <laughs> oh. Well, it looks like... You know, when I played high school football, they taught us about the angle of pursuit, and one of those cops had a very good angle of pursuit on that suspect. We're back live now uh, with a little bit of a, a view under that uh, viaduct where you can see something, uh, you know, they, they apparently have him cuffed and on the ground. It all happened underneath the overpass, and we don't exactly know what happened to the we guy. We do know the pursuit is over. We do know that he is in custody and as far as anything else about why he was running we don't know that we do have some reports out of LA that he was a parolee and John as you mentioned California being a three strike state uh, one more violation and you could be going to prison for life so I believe you could kind of make him out in the middle of your screen there we'll try to get some more information but um well a low car speed chase and a low run to finish it up but the man and the driver is in custody, and we'll try to get you more information as we get it into the newsroom. If he goes back to prison, maybe he can work on his sprint speed.